Hi friends, Kim here with Cat Scrappiness. Welcome to our YouTube channel. And I am going to be making an interactive card today. And it's going to be an interactive shadow box card. I'm going to be using these reverse scallop mini slimline dies. I'm going to use the largest one. I have the Hippity Hoppity Bunny and Sentiment sets that were just released. The Happy Easter die, word die, and shadow die. I have the Slimline Grass die and these great clouds. I love that die. And the hop into Easter paper. And this is gorgeous paper. You can see the patterns are beautiful. My original plan was to go ahead and use this polka dots. I really like the green here because um, I thought I could coordinate it with some papers. And when I pulled out the papers, it, the, one was a little dark, one was a little light. I decided to go with the dark one. And so I'm going to use one piece of that green and one piece of white. I pulled out the new pencil bone folder, my original bone folder from Cat Scrappiness, the embellishment tray and spoon, a bunch of different adhesives, and my reverse tweezers. I also pulled out my embellishment organizer. I'm either going to use the lemon or the aqua jewels here that were recently released. I think they work so well with the paper, which I'm sure was Kathleen's plan. And I'll move the organizer aside and I'm going to get started by making my card base. Now I already have my bunnies stamped, colored, and cut. These are from a previous project. I stamped all six and then I had these three left over so I'm going to use those up today. And I am going to go ahead and cut my card base. So my card base will be an interactive shadow box card and I'm going to cut this at six inches by ten and a half inches. So this is this will be ten and a half. I save my scraps because I'll use those for other parts of the card. And then I'm going to do my scoring. I'm going to score at three and a half inches and I'm using that new pencil bone folder which I'm loving I might add. So three and a half inches, then six and a half inches, then I'm going to flip it over 180 degrees and score it at one inch and then three and a half inches. So if you have a 12 by 12 score pal, I scored it at three and a half, six and a half, seven and ten. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and use my original Teflon bone folder from Cat Scrappiness and give all of those lines a good score. So you can see that I'm actually folding around the well like the car the paper is still facing me the way I scored it I'm just folding away from those score marks um, I find that I don't damage my cardstock when I fold it that way sometimes if I fold it the other way the the edges crinkle and I don't like the way that looks so this is kind of how it's going to fold together and then it'll go flat when you put it in a your envelope to send and then it'll pop up when the recipient receives it and opens it up. So I'm using my um, circle die from the Cat Scrappiness Crafters Essential Die Set 1. This is always on my desk. I use it all the time. And notice that I am cutting the piece, um, the last panel, next to the one half inch flap. And I'm cutting the circle out of that one. Okay, so now I can show you how this goes together. And that one half inch flap is going to get some um, quarter inch tape. You could use one half inch tape if you have it. I didn't happen to have any handy. So I'm using the one half inch double sided tape. I can just tear this off. I like this tape a lot. And um, I'll just peel off that backing. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold up my card and put that. Um, that little one half inch side along the inside of the front of the card. So I'm just lining it up with the other score mark there and then just pressing it. And you can see this folds down flat and then you can pop it up to see the little scene I'm going to create on the inside. So it creates a little shadow box. You could also tuck a candy bar in there, I might add, and you can actually tuck a gift card in there if you want to also. So I've I've die cut out the largest scallop frame from that reverse scallop 
mini slimline and I decided I wanted to use those flowers it was just too pretty so I cut this down to three and a quarter and I should have cut um, a quarter of an inch off the bottom of that but I didn't I'll end up doing it in a couple of minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and just put the front of my card together and here's where I should have trimmed it off instead I decide that I'm gonna go ahead and start putting it together so I pulled out some of my 1 8 inch little foam strips I love these I like a little bit of dimension behind these frames when I make them so I put that on and then for some reason I decided to go ahead and glue my paper down and then as I start to do this I realize oh I forgot to trim the bottom so don't do that put your frame on first it's just going to be a little messier doing it this way since I already have the glue on c'est la vie right uh, story of my crafting life so now I'm just flipping this over and I'm gonna like carefully put this down without hopefully without laying the paper down on my craft mat because then I'll get adhesive everywhere instead of just on my fingers so I'm you know carefully doing this and trying to get it all straight while holding it in the air so then I'm going to trim off that piece you would want to trim that off it looks like it's about a quarter of an inch and you definitely want to trim it before you put the frame on so this whole piece is now you I'm using the liquid glue that I already have on there and centering it on the front of that card and isn't that pretty with the white border around that gorgeous paper and the little bit of green around it I feel like the green works because they're flowers and flowers have green so I'm now going to put together my sentiment so I cut the um, I cut the happy Easter words out of that same green paper I used a piece of uh, the scraps that I had left over and I used some of the white piece that I had here to cut out the shadow die for the happy Easter I love that the word dies come with shadow dies it makes them so versatile I don't always use a shadow die but I love having it when I want to use it and I think it just adds such a pretty touch to this and it helps your sentiments really stand out if I just put that green on the paper it would look nice but it's really gonna pop now now you can like use the negative part of that die um, and like use it to help you line it up but I feel like this is pretty easy to line up so I just went ahead and put dots of glue around the sentiment and um, I'll use my reverse tweezers and just place that down those reverse tweezers are heavenly I love them and cat scrappiness has those in the shop and they are um, very useful for this, this is what I use them for most it's putting glue on top of th small things or skinny things and then place the piece down on top and I notice that I have a microfiber cloth there that I always have that at hand I'm a little messy with the glue and I just dab it up and then I'm gonna finish it this die cuts in two pieces like this and again if you want to put that negative piece down on top so you can actually figure out how these layer together you can do that but that shadow die makes it pretty easy to decide how to put it so I'm gonna go ahead and add some liquid glue to the back of that shadow die and put that together and I think I'm gonna use one of those little bunnies I just love these little bunnies I have to say I think the entire design team loved this release like love because we all seem to really enjoy creating sweet little spring cards with these adorable bunnies so I used the blue one that I had there and now I'm gonna do the inside the inside of the card so I die cut out a whole bunch of things I did die cut out that circle die in white and I'm pulling out my Concord and ninth um, aqua sky color it's a, a nice blue light blue color and I really like it so I've just pulled out a blending brush and 
I'm just adding a little blue so I can have some sky in there. And you can see I also die cut out the grass and some clouds. So I'll be using those. But before I do, I want this green, because I used the scrap piece of green here um, that I had left over from cutting my paper down, my card, card base down. And I'm adding some, uh, this is parsley ink, and it's just slightly darker than the cardstock. So I'm just adding enough of that to cover where I'm going to put the grass. I want that grass to um, stand out from the card base so that it doesn't, you know, blend in perfectly with the card base. So I'm just going to add a little glue to the back that where I colored and then pop that on the circle and I'm just going to trim it down. Now um, I will eventually come back and just go trim this all around that whole circle. So at this point just go ahead and do that. It will be easier um, because I, I I'm thinking in my head this isn't going to show up. Um, the outside of the circle isn't really going to show up in the shadow box, but it does show up enough that you want to do a nice job trimming it. So I'm going to use the other two bunnies I have ready. You can see I pulled out the two smallest clouds and I'm just going to place those behind the bunny and I'll add some liquid glue. And I haven't glued the bunny down yet. I just sort of tucked the bunny in and I'll add a little glue to the back of that bunny as well. So I'm going to cut the cloud down that's hanging off and use the other side for the other side of my circle and um, put him put the other bunny sort of down in front. And I did pop the second little bunny up on some foam. I like to have a little dimension in my shadow box. Sometimes I'll actually attach like sometimes I will attach that second little bunny to the um, front of the shadow box circle there or um, just glue it right behind the circle itself the, that I cut out and attach it to like the green part of the card here and it gives it helps give it a, all a little bit of dimension so now I'm going around that little circle die and I'm trimming off all of the pieces because when I tucked it in there I realized that it shows so I want to have a neater little circle there so I cleaned up the circle and um, I'm going to add a little bit more grass and this piece of grass is actually going to get tucked behind that circle that I die cut out in the shadow box itself so I'll add some glue here come my tweezers again. They're such handy little tweezers. Pardon my head. I want to get that lined up just right so that when you look in, it looks like it's directly in the circle. Then I'm going to take that little piece of grass. I'm putting glue on the front of the grass and I'm going to tuck it in right behind that die cut circle, trying to get as much of it to show as I can. And I'll just hold it for a minute so it stays there. And then it's, I have a nice little piece of grass in front of my little bunnies. And I like that. So the, the next thing I definitely want to do is I want to create a little sentiment for the inside. So I'm going to pull out that hippity hoppity sentiment set. And my very favorite one is Somebody Loves You. I love it. There's so many good sentiments in here. There are lots of puns and there are a couple, you know, happy spring, happy Easter. Um, if you don't want to send, if you don't like puns, so it's a nice set. You can actually build your own sentiment with, uh, that too. So like, I like it. You can put it together in different ways. So I'm just going to use black ink. I went ahead and cut that out with my trimmer. I'm just going to add some liquid glue on the back. And you can see I was using scrap of white here. I like to use up my scraps. And I'm just gluing that to the inside. And that's the card all put together. I just need to add some embellishments. And I'm thinking, I love the pop of yellow on there. I did put that clear block down to hold it closed. So I decided to go with the yellow gems. And I'm just going to put three gems down. And I'll use liquid glue to do that. And I'm just putting them on the sentiment, on the white part of the sentiment, so you can see them. I love the way that looks. You could put one in each of the flower centers if you really wanted a lot of sparkle on there. And I always use liquid glue to put these down. And again, I keep that cloth handy so I can clean up 
um, if I squish any glue out. I think I was pretty careful there. And that is going to complete my card. I'll put all the links to everything below. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Please make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And have a wonderful day.